The Salish Sea. This world-famous waterway, a system of interconnected marine ecosystems, and its web of upstream links to rivers, forest, mountains, and glaciers, sustains a huge abundance of life. Not only the creatures of the sea, air, and land, but us too, the people who live here. My name is Chris Morgan. As a wildlife ecologist, filmmaker, and host of the podcast, The Wild, I'm endlessly curious about life in our region and the mysteries of how it all fits together. Believe it or not, this tree is actually part salmon. <laughs> no, really, nitrogen from salmon can actually be found in all these trees. Salmon have had an enormous influence on how the Pacific Northwest itself has taken shape. They've been swimming alongside the creatures of this area and the many native First Nation and Coast Salish tribes for tens of thousands of years. Out here in the wild, you would expect the salmon to be fighting their way upstream to spawn a new generation. But what about right in the middle of our cities? Today, I'm going to meet up with Sienna and her mum, Stephanie, along the Cedar River. As a scientist and an Ojibwe woman, a member of a Native American tribe, Stephanie Blair is working on cutting-edge research to help us understand what these incredible animals face. Hi. Hello. Stephanie, so nice to be here with you. Yeah, so nice to meet you, Chris. Home of the salmon. And you must be Sienna. Uh-huh. Hi, I'm Chris. Hi, Chris. What a beautiful spot. It is so beautiful. The kind of place where you're working all the time, hey? Yeah, well, this is my inspiration, being out here. Yeah. And what is it about a place like this that inspires you? Salmon have always been a sacred food, uh, a teacher for people since time immemorial. They have stories to tell us. Uh, they have a lot to teach us about how we can live a life that's more um, in connection and in relationship with the natural world. I think people are realizing how those connections not only make us healthier, but they improve our mental and our spiritual and emotional connections to the world around us. They're like this icon, aren't they, that sort of represents, ties all those things together. Yeah. And what kind of work have you been doing? I know you've been doing some amazing research on salmon and where humans can affect them. How is that? What have you been revealing? So I'm part of a lab, a salmon toxicology lab, that studies the effects of urban stormwater runoff on Pacific salmon and coho salmon in particular. First of all, what is storm drain runoff? Stormwater runoff is the most important source of pollutants in the Puget Sound. So all of our daily activities that we don't even think about when we're driving down the roads, when we're fertilizing our lawns, it leaches lots of contaminants that are in the manufactured materials and chemicals that make our daily lives possible. And all of that is carried by the rainfall um, through stormwater runoff and ends up into urban streams and creeks and rivers such as this one. Hidden dangers kind of thing, is it? The hidden dangers, yes. So we've known for decades that stormwater pollutants have been causing recurrent die-off events of coho salmon in urban streams throughout the Seattle area. So coho salmon are a indicator species that are really pointing out this larger problem. So these salmon let you study something important that affects their survival but it seems like there's more than science to it for you, right? And then you're probably thinking about the next generation a lot as well, hey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We all value our children. We all value future generations. And I think that as human beings, we definitely have a sense of that connection, no matter where we live, whether we live in the city or we live in more rural environments. And we all want to do something about this problem. And really it comes down to rethinking the way that we build our infrastructures, rethinking the way that we go about our daily lives in a way that respects our relationship with water and respects how water is a necessity not just for us, but for all life, for all species, including salmon. It makes me feel hopeful. 
How about skipping rocks, Sienna? Water is life. Stephanie's hoodie said it all. And it's the water quality that's essential for all of us as it percolates through the Salish Sea ecosystem. Now, just try to picture how far the salmon travel. Here I thought my commute was tough. And can you imagine doing this journey upstream through the Ballard Locks while pregnant? Aside from the salmon, nobody knows this journey better than Charlotte Spang, the Seattle Aquarium's field outreach coordinator and manager of the Cedar River Salmon Journey, a volunteer program educating people on how they can make a difference for salmon so they can survive and hopefully thrive. Charlotte. Hi. This is amazing. <laughs> I know, isn't it incredible? I was paddling above these guys a moment yeah. ago and now to come down here and see them like this, it's just, it's magical. I know, it really is magical. These fish are the most amazing species I can think of. We are so fortunate to live in this urban area where we get to share our watershed with this wild species that inhabit so many different places. I, I do love this concept of, you know, we're not in the wilderness, we're in a city. And, and uh, people are missing out in a city like Seattle if they don't know that this world exists. Oh, completely. We are here because of them. People live here because of salmon. Mm -hmm. And have lived here for time immemorial because of salmon. We can see them here in the locks as they're returning. But in the fall, many of our streams and rivers all around Puget Sound have salmon returning. And you can go see them yourself then. It's just an incredible way to connect to this thing that's bigger yourself. It's magic, isn't yes. it? You know, it's something mysterious and wonderful about it that we're all a part of. Like, you and your team are amazing at conveying how special these salmon are, but then how do you convey what people should do and can do? So I see hope because I see that there are things that we can all do individually if you happen to own a car, taking your car to a commercial car wash instead is a way, of instead of in washing it in the driveway because or on the street. Ends yes, up here. exactly. And collectively supporting government efforts to help salmon, that will have a positive benefit on these fish, who frankly we all depend on, right? We need these fish. Many of us love eating salmon. That's like an iconic thing we'd all do here in the Pacific North Northwest. So sorry, I'm getting choked up. Oh, no, it's <laughs> fine, yeah. Can I give you a big hug now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was so so wonderful oh, and that was well. awesome. As I put in my kayak and paddle out, I think about the salmon and what they mean to us as a city, as a community, and what they mean to the Coast Salish people, whose lives and culture have been shaped by salmon for tens of thousands of years. We can't take the salmon for granted. They have shaped us, and they have shaped this Salish Sea watershed, and they need our attention. We know what's good for salmon is good for us. I know it can seem overwhelming, but if experts like Stephanie and Charlotte believe in their resilience, I do too. I also believe in us. We can do this. We can make small changes to our lifestyle, rethink our relationship with water, and together push as a society for the big changes we all need for salmon and humans alike. And perhaps the salmon in this city are the key to that connection. After all, water is life.